Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the East Lindsay series. This is the biggest district in Lincolnshire containing 188 civil parishes. Without further ado, here's today's offering. Welcome back to East Lindsay once again people to a place that's quite large by East Lindsay standards but yet it still has a very rural feel because it's very spread out all over the place there's a lot of farm buildings a lot of a lot of fields here there and everywhere and lots of hidden history too this is a place that to be honest with you might take me quite a while to walk around which is not something I usually say in these parts welcome to the parish of Minting East Lindsay series is sponsored by Gainsborough Cycles 01427 617 752. For all your cycling needs, this is your one stop shop located at 20 Ropery Road, Gainsborough, or online at gainsboroughcycles.com. There's a link in the description. Gainsborough Cycles, ask for Trevor Halstead. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like, and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. Minting, place of mintous people. Our next mission in East Lindsay is to take on Minting, a village that's spread out over quite a sizeable area and has a lot more than you might initially think it does. Minting is an unusually named settlement. Even though its etymology is uncertain, I've gone with Place of Minter's People because it sounds more plausible. Others believe it literally means Mint Place, a possible reference to the herb that might grow in your garden. Minting has always been heavily connected to neighbouring Gortby. Both are set in gently undulating farmland with the extensive Lincolnshire lime woods to the west and both have historic connections. Whilst the Doomsday Book didn't mention Gortby, it did refer to two places called Minting. They were recorded as Menting Hez. One of these is believed to have been the now lost village of Little Minting, which lies somewhere within Gortby's boundaries. From a historical standpoint, Minting was most notable for its small Benedictine priory, which existed with a somewhat chequered history from the early 13th century until the dissolution of the monasteries. There's also a pretty tragic tale to tell here centred around the pub, the Sebastopol Inn. We'll talk about that and more as we venture around an East Lindsay village once again. Let's go. We start on Silver Street in the southeastern corner of the village. A small village with a modest population, Minting is effectively made up of four streets. This road typified what was to be before me in the first couple of minutes. Minting is greatly residential, and Silver Street is entirely. It's a mixture of both old and new property-wise. Several centuries ago, Minting was composed entirely of mud and stud cottages. Some of those do still exist here, if you know where to go. Minting's claim to fame would be its status as a thankful village, meaning it suffered no fatalities in World War I. Minting is not on the Lincolnshire Wolds, despite what you may think given the local scenery. It is, however, right on the edge and can be a popular place for walkers, cyclists and anyone else who likes a bit of Lincolnshire countryside. 
despite the rain, this Lincolnshire boy definitely does. Further down Church Lane, the houses continue, but soon they're complemented by a watery companion. Minting has two streams, which crisscross the northern reaches of the village. This one runs from east to west, whilst the other goes north to south. Let's hop across the road now and head into the churchyard. Dedicated to St Andrew, Minting's church is Grade 2 listed. It has medieval origins, but largely what we see here today are the results of an 1863 restoration by Ewan Christian, a date which can be found on the church's rainwater hoppers. Built of greenstone, the west end of this church has a large buttress supporting the bellcoat, with windows on either side. The chancel, however, is medieval and contains medieval fabric. Built into the east wall of the nave to either side of the chancel arch are the carved fragments of a 13th century cross. There are two fonts, one 12th century and the other 19th. Next we have the Sebastopol Inn. This pub dates back to at least 1836 when it was an unnamed beer house. The small public bar is complemented by a larger dining area. It bills itself as a pub that serves food and not a restaurant that serves beer. That seems legit. So how did it get its unusual name? For that we go back to the 1850s. According to local legend it's named after a soldier who drowned in a local dyke after celebrating his safe return from the Crimean War. At the inquest in Horncastle it was revealed he was from Sebastopol. The name has stuck ever since. The village green now. Here's the parish notice board and you all know what that means by now. Tick off minting everyone, it's in the books. The green lies at the dead centre of the settlement and it's a little uncharacteristic when compared to the traditional. Sure, it's grassy and has a few trees, but it's punctuated by the two streams, which meet each other right in the centre. Their steep banks mean this green is actually one you'd most likely avoid walking on. So avoid it we shall. Our next job is to head towards this house in your shot now, because we're about to encounter some earthworks. Now at this point, if you follow a gravel drive which is off the green, you come to this field. You can see there with a, a pond in it. Now we're going to cross this field. This is very important historically, this area, because it's full of earthworks. There used to be a priory here once upon a time. So we'll cross this and we'll talk about it as we go. The Priory of Minting for Benedictine monks was founded by Ranulf de Machine, the Earl of Chester, sometime before his death in 1129. It's uncertain when it was actually built, but the earliest mention of a prior appears in records dated 1213. Its parent abbey, Saint Benoit sur Loire, was French, based as it was in Fleury. The Priory never did much for its superior and was often seen as a disgrace. Records show some of the minty monks were deposed for the likes of disobedience, wandering abroad and eating flesh contrary to rule. These earthworks are now all that remain. After walking down Chapel Lane, we find ourselves at the Village Hall next. This opened in 2002 and serves Minting, Waddingworth, Wispington and Gortby, despite the fact that Gortby has its own. It is though a lot bigger than its counterpart and it's often privately hired by folks from further afield. Next to it is a modest playing field, making this the centre of the Minting community. Beyond this point, the road runs off towards Gortby, so next for us it's Grundy's Lane. This will take us back to the green, but on the way it passes arguably the most important house in the village. Opposite this row of dwellings on the left hand side is a house called the Priory. It was once linked to the Priory complex. The cottage that stands here now is 17th century and it's the oldest in Minting. It once contained a much older moated mansion house that belonged to the Monson family. Of course it's private property so we can't see it but more information about that house and others can be found on the next little green. This information board tells you all kinds of things about minting, ranging from the priory to the school to the church and even to the composition of the housing. There's some quite good stuff on this information board, including something I didn't even know about until literally just a few seconds ago. Look at this here. 
right at the southeastern corner of the village. I'm parked on Silver Street, just there, and I'm just north of this, the station that never was. And here's a bit of information about it. It was proposed by the Lancashire, Derbyshire and East Coast Railway Company to build a line which would have passed through, min through minting and would no doubt have incorporated a station as depicted by Melanie Harris's illustration. How about that? Minting may have had a station at one point, but it never ever happened. And this is my route back to Silver Street. I've come back through the churchyard and onto this footpath here. Another earthworky field awaits me here. So I'll go through this, this gate. If there are some earthworks in this field, I don't know anything about them, I must admit. And we're gonna cross this back to where my car is parked. You can you might be able to see it actually, just there. So uh, yeah, that is the route around minting. And that's it folks, minting is in the books. This road takes us north towards the A158 at Bournemouth. I will finish this episode with a little admission. When I wrote the script for this one, I was a little ill at the time. I probably as a result haven't given it the full beans like I would normally, but I did my best in the circumstances. Minting likely has plenty more to talk about and I'm sure it's worth exploring deeper. Perhaps then this is a challenge for you all. Come to minting yourself and have a wonder. It's worth the effort. See you next time in East Lindsay where we'll be heading a lot further north. Look out Grimsby, I'm coming back. See you all soon. Thanks for watching this video folks, don't forget to like this episode if you haven't already, it really makes a difference with YouTube. If you're new here, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this and give us a share too if you've got friends who'd like it. You can find all the links to my social media accounts below as well as my buy me a coffee page where you can donate to the channel. Also if you've enjoyed this episode, have a look at some more videos in this series. Until next time, I've been Andy, also known as the Village Idiot, and I'm out.